Mr. J.C. Denton, in the fresh. As dark and serious as his brother. Hi, baby. What's your name? J.C. Mmm, mysterious. Perfect. I order you to stand in the spotlight and growl at the women like a dog who needs a master. He was a good man. What a rotten way to die. Depending on what day of the week you ask me, Deus Ex is my favorite game. I haven't kept track, but I'm fairly certain it's the game I've beaten the most over the years. I'm not one to typically replay games over and over. Deus Ex is a game where its sum is greater than its parts. Combat is clunky, the stealth is fine, but there's plenty better. There's plenty of jank all over the place. But it's all how it comes together that makes it what it is. Deus Ex offers so much choice in how you want to tackle the objectives given to you. The game is the best at acknowledging your player choices. The amount of love and care put into this game is staggering. And every time you replay Deus Ex, you're going to find something new. It's a conspiracy-driven thriller that over 20 years later, it's amazing how many predictions this game made that came to happen in our world. It's one of those right games made at the right time where the tech became feasible for it, but before a time when the industry moved away from risk-taking. It's the game that its creator, Warren Spector, wanted to make. It was his dream game, and it came out the way he wanted it to be. I was going to do a video on Deus Ex earlier, as I did this playthrough a couple months back. However, I held off a bit as there were some other notable Deus Ex videos released at that time. This turned out to also be a blessing, as there was a notable mod that was released, and more has happened in our world that chose Deus Ex getting the future right again. So now it's time for the Boulder Punch perspective. Do you have a single fact to back that up? For this video, I'm playing Deus Ex without any gameplay mods, as the game was released. I'm using Kenti's launcher to get it running on modern systems. I'll provide a link in the description. A popular gameplay mod is Give Me Deus Ex, which I've done various playthroughs with. It makes some various quality of life improvements, changes to the AI or how the abilities work. Overall, I still prefer the original with all its quirks, but it's always there. I see people describe it like a New Game Plus playthrough. The origins of Deus Ex start in the early 90s, with Warren Spector coming up with a plan to pitch it, then known as Troubleshooter. His goal was to recreate the feeling of playing Dungeons & Dragons for the first time in video game form. Instead of a fantasy world, it was based on cyberpunk. He took heavy influence from the X-Files and conspiracies from the real world. He was at Origins at the time, but couldn't get the approval to get the game into production. He also tried for the same thing at Looking Glass Studios. For Thief, he sucked at stealth, so he suggested that the player be able to fight their way out. For Warren, this is the idea of giving the player more control of what they could do. Luckily, Thief stuck to its guns, or I guess lack of guns. After leaving Looking Glass, Warren was tapped to make use of the ideas he had in mind for Deus Ex. This was going to be a role-playing game based in the world of Command and Conquer. It's one of those interesting what-ifs if we lived in another timeline and we got that instead of Deus Ex. Although under the EA umbrella, I wondered how much they would have hampered the vision of what Warren had in mind. However, a call from John Romero, who had recently launched Ion Storm, would change things. John Romero offered the chance for Warren to make whatever he wanted without having to worry about a number of external factors. Creative interference, budgets, and so on. So with that, Deus Ex got to work in the summer of 1997. So there's always a double-edged sword when you don't really have to worry about normal constraints. It's a quote I've used before, which is, The enemy of art is the absence of limitations, from Orson Welles. And it's not like Deus Ex didn't have any limitations, but there were plenty of things here that Warren and the team didn't have to worry about. And it wasn't like development was a smooth process. There were clashes in the team, some pushing for more of a shooter approach, some pushing more of an RPG approach. And while they were located in Austin where Romero and the rest of Ironstorm were in Dallas, the negative public perception of the studio did take a toll on them. Warren mentioned that many talented people passed working on the project as a result. Some of the main guiding philosophies of Deus Ex include the following. Problems, not puzzles. No forced failures. Roll spelt with an E, not as in rolling a dice. It was all about the sums being greater than the parts. But compared to things like Half-Life on shooting, Thief for stealth, or Baldur's Gate for roleplaying, they were dead. But in the end, Deus Ex more or less turned out how Warren imagined it, and that's something that's a rarity in the industry. So of course, being a 20-year-old game, there's the whole issue with dated graphics, but it still has that charm of the late 90s, early 2000s. This was on the first Unreal Engine. So the first Unreal Engine didn't have tons of game using it, especially compared to other engines like Unreal 3 or Unreal 4 and so on. But here's a list of some of the more notable games using Unreal Engine 1. So while the game is set in 2052, it's fairly grounded in regards to how the future looks, especially when you compare it to the IDOS Montreal prequels, Human Revolution being set in 2027. During the development of Human Revolution, the art director there ran to Warren Spector. Warren suggested maybe where the first game visited was just older and more gritty. And hey, that works for me. With this game's development taking place in the late 90s, there's some of that style, especially the trench coats. And JC's look pulls heavily from Blade. Then there's that music. My goodness, the music. 
the instantly recognizable melodies, the sheer number of tracks that you can come across here. Each level has a main ambient track, a track for combat, a track for conversations, and a track for game over. While putting together this video, I checked out a playlist for the music, and man, even after all these years, there's plenty of tracks I've never heard before especially the game over ones. Sure, it could have been easy just to make one game over track, but to do so for each level is just one of those things where Deus Ex goes above and beyond. For my favorite track, I'd have to go for the music that plays during conversations in Paris. thing I love about Deus Ex here is the musical motif. That's a short musical phrase that appears over and over again. Here's a few examples. Three pillars of Deus Ex as said from Warren Spector were combat, sneak, and role-playing. So let's start with e-combat. This being an RPG, we'll need experience points to boost our stats, which can be done so through exploration, completing objectives, or side missions. We can also find upgrades to our weapons for more range, faster reload, better accuracy. And depending on which weapon class we use and what skills we put into, we're going to be aiming like a drunken sailor at first. It's fine to think that we're some major hope for Yunatko, and it's possible we're shooting like that. So even when you do upgrade, Deus Ex shooting is just okay. Nothing great, for its time and for now. Weapons mostly lack weight. But unlike the IDOS Montreal games, we can have melee weapons instead of takedowns. Depending on what you use, you can feel like you're doing nothing, or you'll destroy things beyond belief. And then there's the AI in combat. Deus Ex has some pretty goofy AI. That's also part of the charm, and one of the things of the game sums being greater than its parts. So there's something rare that happens here in this game when enemies get near to death or being knocked out. Instead of hanging around, they'll just run away. That does make sense after all, why would they stick around? It's fight or flight, and they've chosen flight. When it comes to stealth, I mean, if you compare it to something like Thief, which is built all around stealth, stealth here is passable, but definitely falls short. It's not really surface dependent, but more on the lighting. And hey, this is also back in the days where you could actually hear enemies approaching. So you don't need mini maps or seeing through walls to have any indication that you would go around a corner and be spotted. There's always that brief pause that happens when you think they spot you. Maybe they do, or if you're in the dark, they won't. Or you could just run up and clobber them. Quiet. I think we got cops. Company. It's one of those quirks of the AI here that you can get used to. On the dialogue side of things, there's no real dialogue battles like there were in the IDOS Montreal titles. There's no real store menus, although people will sell stuff at various points. Some dialogue choices will change how certain encounters play out, but by no means was it a deep system or anything. But if we do talk to people, you might get some additional information that could help us out on our mission. Well, hacking here, depending on how much skill you put into it, it's just a click. It's funny how you could just hack in front of someone, go into Manor Lee's office, and start reading his emails right in front of him. But it's with the augmentations you could get, and how they play with the other systems, where everything really comes together. There's plenty of options here and depending on what body part you may have to choose between one or another augment. Some range from healing to higher strength, controlling a spy drone that has an EMP attack. You can increase lung capacity, damage reduction, jump higher and reduce falling damage, cloaking. I do like for cloaking that there's one for humans and one for robots. When you mix and match these you could get some pretty incredible things and make short work of enemies. And the game never really gives you any hard locks as a result. There's no real skill checks I would say if you get creative enough. As Warren Spector said with their design philosophy, roll with an E, not roll like the roll of a dice. For example, you could use your augs to jump higher to get over a wall. You could also use strength to move objects to use them to get over. Or you could use landmines on the wall to jump up on to get over. Say you need to get through a locked door, you could find the key for it. Maybe you could find a computer to unlock the door, this computer that you can hack, or maybe you found the login and password around. Perhaps you could explode the door open with a grenade or the gep gun. Perhaps you can make noise to get the guard's attention inside who will come out to investigate. Perhaps you could jump up on the roof to find a way in from above. There also might be a vent that you could use to get in. To this day, even with all the jank, even with the games with a similar design philosophy, Deus Ex still manages to be the best at giving the player choice on this front. And for these systems to work well, a game needs good level design, and Deus Ex delivers this in droves. These locales feel like real places, and don't have what I call convoluted design. And what do I mean by that? Well, one of my big criticisms for the IDOS Montreal Deus Ex titles were they got too reliant on vent crawling. Of course there are vents here, but nowhere at the same level. And it's not a case of move the heavy item to find a vent there like those games love to do. 
In every situation, you can find a different way around or use an item or skill in an intended or unintended way to progress forward. It's frequently said that with each new playthrough you do with Deus Ex, you're going to discover something new. I did come across different paths or approaches to get somewhere. It's things like this has made Deus Ex such a beloved game. All right, from here on in, there's going to be spoilers as we go through the plot, the levels, choices, conspiracies, and more. So let's get to it. We kick off the game with two men talking in front of this globe. I'm sure this conversation has burned into many people's minds and can recite a good portion of it, if not all of it. This play, the rioting is intensifying to the point where we may not be able to contain it. Why contain it? Let it spill over into the schools and churches. Let the bodies pile up in the streets. In the end, they'll beg us to save them. So we're playing as J.C. Denton, part of UNATCO, United Nations Anti-Terrorist Coalition. The NSF, a designated terrorist group, has taken over the Statue of Liberty. So we start off here on Liberty Island. I don't know how many times I've played through this level now over the years. What playthrough number is this? And I've also seen a number of people who've been filtered by this level over the years. People struggle with this level or drop the game entirely, but we're glad to push through. Which leads me to thinking back what it was like for me the first time back in the year 2000 when I played it. I can't really remember. I'm guessing I did have some pretty heavy safes coming to begin with though. It's a great vertical slice of the game with the options you could take. And part of it's also why it filtered so many. It lets you free into the world and lets you go crazy. And there is a tutorial and highly advised when first going into the game to get a feel for it. I do have to note this strange setup for UNACO. Our base is right next door here. We have the NSF, the terrorists, here holding some hostages and ambrosia shipments. It seems a bit odd that they attack something you know right next door to us. And getting here all the time from the main island might not be the most convenient, but whatever, we'll roll with it. And I guess the NSF knew they were going to send in JC to get a handle on the situation, who depending on what skills you picked isn't exactly the biggest threat to begin with. This has also played a part of why people have struggled with starting the game off, since your skills are going to be quite low at the time. Well, you have options to become a much bigger threat. The iconic choice of what weapon you could take, a crossbow, a sniper rifle, or the GEP gun. For this video, fuck it, we're taking the GEP gun. Never know when I might come up against some heavy armor. Give me the GEP gun. The GEP gun might be useful. They have a security bottom patrol near the statue entrance. Sure, we could take the back entrance, climb the boxes, or go to the back and get the password. But we're going to make use of this GEP gun and go a bit more direct. So unlike the IDOS Montreal Deus Ex, there is no expansion of inventory available. So if you're taking the GEP gun, you're going to have a lot more struggles with your inventory. When you collect from enemies, it will automatically pick up everything. So you'll be picking up smokes and sodas that you don't really need. But hey, it's worth it for how handy the GEP gun can be in most situations. And there's also a couple playthroughs back near the Iron and Copper Man, I discovered the bow underwater with some good items. Again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, each time you play Deus Ex, you're going to find something new. And of course, there's that talk with the leader at the top of the statue. It's one of those early signs in the game that you're playing something really special. If you prompt him for more, we'll get quite a bit of info. Number one, in 1945, corporations paid 50% federal taxes. Now they pay about 5%. Number two, in 1900, 90% of Americans were self-employed. Now it's about 2%. So? It's called consolidation. Strengthen governments and corporations, weaken individuals. And don't worry, we'll come back more to the topic of conspiracies later in the video. Now this game came out a little over a year prior to 9-11. The Twin Towers are missing in the skyline due to a memory limitation. The in-game explanation being that terrorists destroyed the Twin Towers is a eerie coincidence. But what can also be forgotten is back in 1993, there was a terrorist attack on the World Trade Centers. A truck bomb was detonated below the North Tower in a failed attempt to take them both down. So the idea of terrorists taking down the World Trade Center wasn't something that hadn't exactly not been tried in the real world at that time. However, something that I haven't seen mentioned in other videos about Deus Ex is the timing of the pilot episode of The Lone Gunman. This ties things back to The X-Files. Lone Gunman was a spin-off show of The X-Files, with its first episode aired in March 2001. It didn't last beyond a season. What's the plot of the pilot episode? Well, the hacker takes control of a plane to crash into the World Trade Center before they're thwarted by the protagonists. They discovered it's a plot by the government to put blame on foreign countries to start a profitable war. So yeah, very eerie timing here. Now's a good time to make note of JC and how iconic of a character he is. There's a lot of goofy charm to his deadpan voice. This was a choice by the developers to make him more of a blank slate so you could get more immersed. Of course, there's so many great lines here from JC. Don't worry, I'll be sprinkling them throughout the video when the time comes. There's that goofy charm of the constant tongue clicks from the voice actor JC. He has more tongue clicks than I do in my earlier videos. Initially, you would have the option to choose between a Lady Denton and a Male Denton, but that was scrapped due to time. However, in the midst of my playthrough, a mod was released, the Lady Denton Project mod. All dialogue was re-recorded with a voice actress, and the way others addressed you were changed to acknowledge this. It's quite the project that they put together. 
I did briefly try it out, and the actress does a pretty good job. Granted, the voice of JC has been ingrained in my mind for so long, so it's a bit odd hearing these lines from someone else. Tell me about the shipment, and I'll order the troops to pick you up as a prisoner instead of a corpse. Tell me about the shipment, and I'll order the troops to pick you up as a prisoner instead of a corpse. And after that, we get some downtime back at the UNATCO office. This is something I feel that Deus Ex doesn't get enough credit for. It's excellent pacing. There are many times throughout the game we'll be moving through enemy territory. There's also times where the game gives us a break to talk to those around us and explore without dealing with enemies. While there are some sections of the game that are better than others, there's no real weak section of Deus Ex. There's no instance of that level. You know, that one that when you think about replaying a game, you remember that one bad level? A good example is the sewer section of Vampire Bloodlines, a video I've covered in the past. Depending on how much you killed versus how much you avoided or took enemies down non-lethally, Paul will chastise you, some foreshadowing of future events. This is one of the things I wish more games took lessons from in regards to Deus Ex, how the game reacts to you. The amount that the game takes into consideration of how you handle things is staggering, and I'll be sprinkling these throughout the video at the appropriate times. Does it really impact the game long term? Not really, but it's more how the game acknowledges your actions. The game more or less plays out the same story-wise beyond the ending choices, but it's how you played it. And while I enjoy these style of games, the quote-unquote choices matter that really popped up in the mid to late 2000s typically took a different approach. Instead of reacting to how you played, it more or less came down to what dialogue choice you made at key moments. For example, look at Mass Effect. More or less all the choices come down to dialogue options. Do you save the Rachni or do you destroy them? What you do before didn't really matter. Granted, that's how those games were built from the ground up, and hey, that worked for them, and I do love Mass Effect. Deus Ex is more about how the game reacts to how you play. It's a completely different approach and philosophy to how the game reacts to you. Even the IDOS Montreal of Deus Ex games, which I love to death, need to lean more into this. There's a number of key moments in those titles that end up coming from how conversations play out, and granted, those are dialogue battles, for better lack of a term, and they're really well put together. But for another example, one of the first missions in Human Revolution has you rescuing hostages. The game reacts accordingly to what you do there. It really makes it clear on your choice. But the rest of the game? Nowhere quite to that level. Here on the other hand, the game continues that throughout. They really thought of everything and how you could possibly play the game, and things are voice acted as a result. It's not just a case of getting an email or a note about it either. That also makes a huge difference. There's also a feeling of something looming here in the shadows, especially after that talk with the terrorist leader at the top of the statue. My new partner, Jesse Denton. Don't tell me you're going to wear those sunglasses during a night operation. My vision is augmented. The next section takes us to Battery Park. It's a short little section. Again, we have multiple approaches, taking the direct approach or giving this kid some food to get a shortcut into the Ambrosia shipments. Anna, who we had the chance to meet at the UNATCO office, prefers the more direct approach and reacts accordingly. You are not afraid to kill. You Max might have copper wiring to reroute your fear of pain, but I've got nerves of steel. There's a bit here dealing with a hostage situation in the subway station. There's tons of ways to make your way and sneak in, but through this playthrough, well, with why I'm armed with, let's go more direct. Oh, oops. I don't believe what I just saw. Those were innocents. You can't go in and just shoot. Next portion of the game is one of the game's hubs, Hell's Kitchen. Another major disappointment that I've found in games since Deus Ex release is how few games make use of hub worlds. Sure, we've gotten plenty of open worlds, but creating a small hub area and just filling it to the brim with meaningful content is something that so few games do. Instead, we've ended up with mostly checklist simulators and maps full of crap. I mean, there's the Bloodlines games have great hubs, the other Deus Ex games did, and that said, it's a different kind of skill set to build all these smaller sections filled with meaningful, interconnected content. Not many studios possess that skill set or take that approach. And there's tons of side content here that you can completely bypass. There's the weapon smuggler, the sewers, the medical clinic, the Taunt Hotel, the bar. And there's plenty of rewards for doing these, of course, from items, experience points, to world building. Deus Ex does a really good job of world building. Some games could be pretty on the nose with it with exposition, but Deus Ex here leaves more of those key points in newspapers and terminals. Conversations we can overhear feel less like exposition dumps and more like people dealing with the world around them. But here everything fits together, fleshes out the world, and connects to something else, like a good side quest should do, and it ties it back to the main quest. Going through these side areas will give you some helpful information in tackling your main objective here. You've got 10 seconds to beat it before I add you to the list of NSF casualties. Easy, bro. Just having us a conversation. Five seconds. Girl's got a head full of marbles. I have to yell. Oh, she don't hear me. Three. She skitches on me. It's my ass, man. One. All right. Go on. Jesus. My dad shouldn't have hired a hitman. Stupid way to get himself killed. Who's this Jojo? 
And did this game make a JoJo reference before that was really a thing? Man, this game was really ahead of the curve in so many ways. We can meet Jock in the bar, who will serve as our pilot throughout the game. And a while back, I did run a poll on which Deus Ex pilot people preferred. One of the cases of Human Revolution doing a better job, Fly Girl won by a large margin. Malik. Jensen, if you even think of using that Casey mod on me, I will hit you. I wouldn't dream of it. That's something nice about doing a video about Deus Ex here, after doing my videos on the IDOS Montreal titles. I can really see how much they respected the source material, something that so many struggle with when handed the IP that they didn't have a hand in creating. Especially over the last decade or so when we've seen so many handed their keys to IPs and decided to take a dump on it and show a little respect to what it was working with. So yeah, keep going and there's a movie theater on your right. FUCK! Are you fucking serious? I honestly serious? didn't mean Are to do that! Are you fucking serious? So to get to our main objective to this generator, there's plenty of choices from the ground level to the roofs. There's plenty of verticality on which approach you want to take. And again, it doesn't feel overly gamey. You're playing in a world that feels like it could exist with its layout instead of one that feels like it was made around the player. I did a bit more exploring here than usual and discovered ways of making my way in that I don't think I've tried before. Again, something that few games can match and one of those reasons that this game is still held in such high regard. Going back to you, Natco, for another little break, things start to open up a little more. Black helicopters, the men in black. Another one of these great cases of the game reacting to how you played earlier. Since I went a bit combat heavy, here's what happened. When in shooting, huh? I never thought I'd see this much. In my day, international peacekeepers were citizens first and soldiers second. You can forget about that extra. A new assignment. I think Agent Denton should handle the assassination. Is there a problem? You lost your appetite? His enthusiasm in Battery Park was exceptional. The courtyard of Castle Clinton was a graveyard. The game is slowly showing you its cards, and the more digging you do with notes and computers, there's something really going on here. Paul has screwed up here and has been let go. He sent us some emails telling us he'll explain to us when we meet up. He has his reasons. Next, we're off to the airport, but we'll be navigating through the tunnels of the mole people. And there's this great case here of the game reacting to one of my decisions. I already dealt with that guy. Knocked him unconscious, flat on his back. Unconscious? You deaf? I said I want homeboy dead. You gonna survive on the street, bro. You gotta have some sense. Like what I tell my crew. No mercy. When it's you and- I used as much force as the situation required. You trying to lecture me on tactics? The airport is one of the more notable sections of Deus Ex. This is where the game really starts to ramp up on robot enemies. And then we get to one of the first major twists of the game, Paul working with the NSF. There are hints about this throughout, like Paul chastising you if you're too kill-heavy early on, or him giving non-lethal grenades to Unaco soldiers in Hell's Kitchen. There's more with various emails and notes you could find. That Grey Death virus? Well, it's man-made. Paul's doing what he can as a double agent to help get a vaccine out to the people instead of the wealthy. We could talk to Lebedev here, which opens up the game even more with the conspiracies. However, Anna will come in to take care of him, or you could kill him. Or you could also kill Anna here. If this were pretty much any other game, this wouldn't be possible. Killing her here will save you a bit of time later. If you do kill her here, you get a bit more information about conspiracies. You didn't have parents. The ones you knew were employees. You were made by a couple of technophiles so crazed for power that they would control not only governments and people, but the chemistry of our bodies as well. Going back to Unaco after taking this approach is really fun to see some of the reactions. Did I mention that depending on what day of the week you ask me, this is my favorite game? Agent Navarro was out of line. I had no choice. They'll have you killed. They won't even blink an eye. Neither did I. I have some bad news about Agent Navarro. No shit! What the hell happened in there? Lebedev. A surprise attack. I find that hard to believe. You're digging your own grave if you cover up for your brother. Yes, sir. I'm not covering up for Paul, sir. We meet up with Paul again in Hell's Kitchen, and with our next objective, wants us to betray Unatko. So initially, they want to let you stick with Unatko as one of those choices. But the scope made it too much, and that's understandable. It happens pretty early in the game, and how much would you have to change as a result? The game is filled to the brim with content as is. This is something that Harvey Smith mentioned in a retrospective. If he had the choice to do it again, he would have chopped out about a quarter or so of the game and went even more deep with what they had. There's also the side quest here with Jojo that, while my game seemed to glitch with, has one of the game's most iconic lines. What a shame. He can't really be... There must be something we can do. He was a good man. What a rotten way to die. What a shame. He can't really be... There must be something we can do. He was a good man. What a rotten way to die. 
While Paul can die here if we just simply escape, making our way through the Tong Hotel in the front will allow him to live. No matter what, you're going to get captured. And this is something I've always wondered about. What if you could actually avoid capture and skip the next section and go right to Hong Kong? It's the only real forced fail state, and hey, in very slight cases, it's okay to use. It does break that rule that they talked about earlier. Granted, getting kidnapped is one of the first real, whoa, what's really going on here moments in Deus Ex? Now we're in the lower levels of Yunatko's office. And it's here where that we're first contacted by Daedalus, and we'll learn more about Majestic 12. I need you to escape. I can cut power to the door only a few seconds without being detected. Get ready. And depending on your choices here, Paul will either be here or he'll be dead. Although from this point on, he doesn't do a whole lot more in the game itself. And the team did acknowledge that they had this issue. It's something they have with a lot of characters, actually. During some meetings closer to the release date, they realized that some characters just mostly disappear in the game, like Gunther. So they did some fairly last minutes to get them back into the game. That's also something you can get away with when you use someone on staff to do voice acting. We also discussed that Bob Page, who I haven't even mentioned yet, should have a much larger presence during the earlier stages of the game. I never had time to take the oath of service to the Coalition. How about this one? I swear not to rest until Unatco is free of you and the other crooked bureaucrats who've perverted its mission. So now we get a major change of scenery with heading off to Hong Kong. There's tons of very memorable voice acting here. There's that goofy amateur charm of people who are clearly not Chinese doing Chinese accents. Versali has done much to revitalize the community. Rules of Triad Wars. Red Arrow versus Luminous Path. We're off to find Tracer Tong to deal with this kill switch of ours. Maggie Chow is one of the major characters we'll encounter here and help us deal with the gang war between factions. There's tons of verticality in this building with Maggie and options of exploring of how you want to deal with Maggie. You could take her out now or wait until later. And it's here we get the Dragon's Tooth Sword. Yeah, this sword is awesome. A bit too awesome. Hard for me not to use this. It does take up a fair amount of room, especially carrying the Gep Gum doesn't leave a whole lot of room for other things. Man, it just slices and dices through anything like nobody's business. Granted, the impact sound is fairly weak. Whoever's out there. One of my favorite areas of the game is the Lucky Money Club. Now, in the real world, I can't stand clubs, but there's a fascination about clubs in video games, and this is one of the more notable ones. The conversations you could overhear, and the ones you could participate in. Charming dance animations, and JC being the man in the mirror leads to some chuckles. And who could forget the Russian sailors? I spill my drink! Hey, Yevgeny! Yevgeny, where is Yevgeny? That's funny! There's also the notable conversation with the bartender about the politics here, and things get fairly philosophical. Listen to me. This is real freedom. Freedom to arm property. Make your profit. Make your life. The West's so afraid of strong government, now has no government. Only financial power. Our governments have limited power by design. Metric? You believe it? Don't you know where these slogans come from? I give up. Well-paid researchers. How do you say it? Think tanks? Founded by big businesses. What is that? A think tank? Hardly as sinister as a dictator, like Chinese Premier. Privately funded propaganda. A trilateral commission in the United States, for instance. I've never had a conversation with bartenders like this. Granted, when I have had them, it's mostly yelling what drink I want over loud music. And with that, we could finally meet Tracer Tong in the flesh. Or as Maggie Chow would say, In the fresh. There's a lot to talk about with Tong here and explore, and tons to learn about the world around us. We get a number of answers, but even more questions pop up of what's going on here. With that, we head into the lower levels of Versa Life, and hey, you'll recognize that room from the intro. This is where things keep going deeper and deeper. And finally, we get to see the man here who was talking to Simmons at the beginning, our antagonist of Deus Ex, Bob Page. In retrospective, the team mentioned they wish they had more Bob Page earlier in the fold. I love Bob Page as an antagonist here, the world's richest man. In a game full of goofy voice acting, Bob doesn't really fall into the goofy. He's such a presence to have, especially later in the game when he begins to talk to us directly. He just chews up the scenery. It's like it's like a vast majority of the voiceover budget went to him, and it was totally worth it. We've had to endure much, you and I, but soon there will be order again. A new age. Aquinas spoke of the mythical city on the hill. Soon, that city will be a reality, and we will be crowned its kings. Not better than kings. 
So over the last few years, I've seen people make the Elon Musk comparison with Bob Page. To me, I always felt Bob Page was more like Jeff Bezos. I ran a poll to see what people felt, and Jeff won by a fair amount. That said, a number of comments point out Elon remind them more of David Seraph. And it looks like Jeff Bezos will become the first trillionaire, just like Bob Page is. Some are guessing this could happen in as soon as five years. I've also seen other people propose that Elon Musk will reach a trillionaire status first. So whether it's Elon or Jeff, I'm guessing soon they'll become the richest person in history. That title still resides with Mansa Musa I of the Malian Empire in the 14th century. Guesses put his worth from 300 to 400 billion in today's dollars, deriving that wealth from salt and gold. While Bob Page doesn't laugh in the game, I have to say Jeff Bezos has a much better fuck you I'm rich laugh than Elon Musk. Does this seem like a desert to you? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Other comments mention that Bob Page reminded them of George Soros, Dick Cheney, Klaus Schwab, and Bill Gates. Bill was mentioned as an influence for Bob, but so were many other billionaires throughout the 20th century. Back to Deus Ex. We'll also come across what appears to be aliens. In all actuality, these are experiments known as the Bovine Manipulation Project. The game doesn't exactly spill this out as well. A late game conversation and digging through emails will reveal this. With the triads together, we now have a few more things to deal with, the Universal Constructor. We take a back way into Verse Life to deal with this, and if you haven't done so already, you'll have to deal with Maggie Chow. We get mention of Stanton Dowd, and I think this is the first mention of dialogue about the Illuminati. Interesting. The previous owner of the ship was Stanton Dowd. Ever hear of the Illuminati? Come back to the compound. I have much to tell you. So what do you think of when you hear Illuminati? Well, if you're like pretty much anyone else, conspiracy theories. So let's look into the world of conspiracy theories. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about our government, one of which is that we are secretly controlled by the Illuminati, who are actually part of the Mason group, or the Masons were part of the Illuminati and they control everything. To paraphrase a former governor of Minnesota, hidden power, secrets, cover-ups, corruption. You think you know the whole story? Think again. One of the foundations for the world building of Deus Ex was that all conspiracy theories are true. In a number of ways, Deus Ex made so many predictions of what's going on in our world, like a foreign prophecy, some eerily accurate. For example, predicting the rise of terrorism. This is incredible how close in time frame they were on this front. This ties in well with the censorship and consolidation of the internet as well in the game. This is something we learn later in the game, the Aquinas Protocol from Bob Page. So there's this interesting study I found. Back in 2007, 50% of internet traffic came from several thousand websites. Just two years later, 50% came through about 150 sites. 2014, this 50% was around 35. I wonder what those numbers look like now. And of course, Deus Ex has quite the community and internet presence on the front in regards to memes. Look at all those Alex Jones videos that time with Deus Ex from channels like RAN. The Grey Death is a man-made virus. Everyone up to the president is at UNATCO's mercy as long as UNATCO controls the supply of ambrosia. You believe that? We have proof. We need to get the ambrosia to Hong Kong. Heard a tracer tongue? He can help us synthesize it ourselves. Oh yeah, and there's also the Grey Death. It's so interesting to watch that intro or play this game again ever since what's happened since early 2020 and late 2019. Now this is a dicey subject right here, so I'm going to put a pin on this one. I will say do your research and make your own conclusions. But back to the Illuminati. Of course we've heard things about the Bilderberg Group, the Knights Templar, the Rothschilds. So this is all more stuff that was on the fringes and they've started to get a lot more mainstream in our world. And over the last few years it seems like those who are definitely members of the Illuminati are working more out in the open. Now with the Bogdanov twins now gone, on, all bets are off. After all, the Rothschilds answer to the Bogdanov twins, as anyone knows. And on that note, there's a conspiracy theory on Klaus Schwab being a Rothschild himself. Remember, those saying you will own nothing and you will be happy, remember that someone at the end of the day has to own that stuff. It just means more wealth and power for them. And of course, never piss off the powerful and rich. As I was just finishing off the script, the case of Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes found her guilty of four of 11 charges. The four charges she were guilty with all related to committing fraud against investors. Some other charges against investors still have no verdict, but the charges to commit wire fraud against paying patients, the people using the products, not guilty on any of them. I've also seen other YouTubers talk about Deus Ex and how the conspiracy theories make them feel uncomfortable. And well, look at that like to dislike ratio. I mean, it's reality, baby. Baby, come on. Hell, even more Inspector has said the same thing, wondering if he make a game like Deus Ex today. Now, I respect the dude, but his output hasn't exactly been the greatest since Deus Ex. When you make the game you've always wanted to make, your dream game, where do you go from there? Well, you work on Invisible War and Thief Deadly Shadows. 
the Epic Mickey games have their fans. Underworld Ascendant, don't get me started. System Shock 3, after I even see is the light of day, I have low, low expectations. And in doing research on Warren Spector, I came across this dice talk where he mentions his disdain for Chainsaw Lollipop, saying games like that shouldn't be made, while in the same talk praising games like Heavy Rain. What the fuck, Warren? You're talking shit about Suda51? And then praising the work of David Cage? I expect better from you, Warren. So all this talk about conspiracies, let's look at one that's a bit more lighthearted. And this one's fairly topical with the Beatles Get Back documentary recently released as of recording this. So if all conspiracies are true in the world of Deus Ex, and the Beatles existed in this world of Deus Ex, that means Paul McCartney has been dead since the end of 1966. So the theory is that Paul died in the car crash in late 1966. Instead of breaking the hearts of millions of fans, the band secretly brought in a man who won a Paul McCartney lookalike contest and has been him ever since. There have been many hints given on the album covers like Sgt. Pepper's or the Abbey Road cover. There's plenty of hidden messages and songs. It's pretty fascinating. If you have an afternoon, I'd recommend checking it out. Or if you also want a deeper cut Beatles conspiracy theory, there's one in which John Lennon was not shot and killed by Mark David Chapman, but Stephen King. Yep, the author Stephen King. So anyways, I guess getting back to Deus Ex, is there a point I'm going with all this? Well, I guess this is your daily reminder that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. I'm really impressed with how Deus Ex is able to take these conspiracy theories and weave them in and out of the story that works in such a way for a thriller. That was one of the major shortcomings of the Eidos Montreal games. I love them to death, great character work, but they really struggled with getting the integration of the conspiracy theories that work like they do here. And this section takes us to the boatyard. So many different routes that you could take here in ways that I've never tried before. This is something I really appreciate about Deus Ex. There's so much here that will be only seen by a tiny, tiny fraction of players. When you look at game completion rates throughout the years, even games that are short or large blockbusters can have fairly low clearance rates. For example, if you look at the Steam achievements of Portal, it has a completion rate of about 54% on Steam. So to have the team here go the extra distance to do these kind of things that most people will never see really help these games stand out in the long run. The last modern game that I felt that I even got close to this was Prey. We have another scenery change and we're off to Paris. Oh yeah, I should also mention Icarus, who has been contacting us as well. I love the little bit here of Gunther just running after you as you fly away, reminding you that, yep, you still have to pay for what you did to Anna earlier. Another great bit of pacing, we have some downtime to explore Chateau de Claire as we get in closer to getting into contact with key members of the Illuminati. Although finding her mom's secret room wasn't that hard. How did Nicolette at least not find this over the years? So really it's a toss up between the boatyard and the Paris Cathedral was my favorite portion of the game. As great as the music is throughout Deus Ex, here it's just, oh, so good. There's so much to explore in these areas, it's easy to get lost, but in the good kind of lost. The enemies have stepped up their game, but even then, with all the powers you have and all the time I played through this game, it's still a blast to go through. And one of my favorite encounters in the game is with Gunther. He's come here for revenge and has been contacting us throughout. Depending on what choices you made earlier, you don't need to have a fight with him. You could just make use of his kill switch. You're not gonna never trust it in soul mounted agents. Any mech can be stopped in his tracks with a secret kill phrase. Kill something's were standard issue, I gather. Gunther sees La Putin machine. Dog that out of the medical records before I left. I know your Unatco kill phrase. La Putin machine. I am not a machine. Sticks and stones. And after the cathedral, we have another downtime portion of talking with Everett where he's located the leader of the Illuminati. There's so much here and plenty of it stuffed away, like the former leader of the Illuminati being kept in this cryo chamber. Even though the tech is possible to bring him back, Morgan doesn't tell him that. The most noticeable thing that's hidden away is the talk with Morpheus. Boy, if there's ever a talk that sums up Deus Ex or how our world has turned out, this has to be it. Human beings feel pleasure when they are watched. I have recorded their smiles as I tell them who they are. Some people just don't understand the dangers of indiscriminate surveillance. Was one satisfied by God. Now, we can implement the same functionality with data mining algorithms. No one will ever worship a software entity peering at them through a camera. The human organism always worships. First, it was the gods. Then, it was fame, the observation and judgment of others. Next, it will be the self aware system you have built to realize truly omnibus observation and judgment. You underestimate humankind's love of freedom. Individual desires judgment. 
without them, sir. The cohesion of groups is impossible. And so, civilization. Harvey Smith mentioned that they were going to actually do this differently. Instead, Morpheus would answer the props you typed in and acted like an autistic Tom York. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can the panel tell me what was special about that? Are you programmed to invent riddles? This conversation here says so much about our world and how the internet's played out, and Deus Ex itself. There's also the great bit on the roof, the mechanic who plants the bomb, with one of the most memorable lines in the game. What is it? Oh my god, JC, a bomb! A bomb. It's remote control. Hold on. Get out of there. With that, we're heading back to America on the final stretch. So while I do feel the last fifth or so of the game is the weakest portion, it's not by any means a major quality drop. Some of the best games ever made had this issue with large quality drops their last bit. This game is fairly lengthy as is. There is also a number of areas that ended up on the cutting room floor. Harvey Smith mentioned in retrospective that he wished that they went with about 75% of what they had and went more in depth with that. I'm curious at how the game would have been if they went with that approach. I'm guessing they would have chopped up more down at the end here and consolidated more of it. Although I have to say there's more of this eerie feeling to the atmosphere here. And Bob Page begins to talk with us over the info link. This is one of the best things about the layer sections is Bob Page constantly tuning in and talking with us. He's just constantly mocking us. Meanwhile, we will be manufacturing a cure to the virus. A cure? A cure? Do you have any idea how easy it will be for me to make a new virus? All I have to do is find a very large prime number and multiply. This ventilation shaft will take you down into the bunker. Put water up the fan blades. Jump! You can make it! What's the rush? Take a look around. This facility is where you were born. I've arranged an appropriate fate for you through the hallway to the north. A poetic death. Just a few yards away from where you were created. The voice actor they got for Bob Page was such a perfect choice. I'm so glad that they brought him back for the Eidos Montreal titles. We make it to Area 51 where Bob is going to merge with Icarus. And here there's no real final boss encounter. Instead, we have three choices of what we can make. And no, it's not the press a button to select the ending like Human Revolution. You have to go through several steps to get to each ending. Tracer Tong basically wants you to take down the internet. Morgan Everett wants you to get the Illuminati back in power. Or you can merge with Icarus to rule the world as an AI. Each make their compelling point of what they want to do and how the others aren't the best choice. But at the end, it's up to you. You can also find where you were born here and also mention of Alex Denton, the protagonist of Invisible War. So throughout the years, I've tried various endings here. I guess it really depends how you feel at the time. And sometimes I just feel like we need a return to Monkey. There was going to be a fourth ending where we would join with Bob Page, but that was cut. Soon, when my augmented systems like yours are complete and able to be integrated with Helios, I will burn like the brightest star. You're gonna burn, all right. Helios! What's happening? The safety interlocks for the power generators have been disengaged. Engage them! Immediately! I cannot. I switch into not interfaced with the generator technology. No! Final safety warning. Nominal functional level will be exceeded in three, two, one. So here we are. 20 plus years on, and Deus Ex has had a very fascinating legacy. Its story continues to age like a fine wine in how things have played out in our world. While the game sold well, it wasn't by any means a huge seller. When Square Enix acquired IDOS in the Deus Ex IP in 2009, sales for the original tallied over just 1 million. However, it's had an extremely dedicated fan base that has kept the series alive. Sadly, since Mankind Divided, the series has been put on the back burner. And while many on the staff went to work on other games with a similar design philosophy, like Dishonored, I don't feel they've hit the same highs that Deus Ex did. As great as the Eidos Montreal Deus Ex titles were, they still fell short of what Deus Ex was able to accomplish. Sure, Deus Ex was a mishmash of ideas. Ideas that other games did better or were more mechanically sound. But it was the way that they weaved together. The game didn't force you to go down one single path, but could change on the fly. They created a world where you had a number of ways to tackle your objectives. There weren't skill checks to lock your progress, emphasizing the design approach of roll with an E, not roll of a dice. By creating so many approaches, there's always something new that you're going to find with each playthrough. There are a few games that compare with how Deus Ex allows for player choice. And it's a shame, sorry let me try that again. 
What a shame how this approach to game design has largely been neglected since. The immersive sim design philosophy at the big budget level has been something few studios have tackled. Granted, beyond a few exceptions, these type of games haven't been huge sellers and require long development cycles. But the DNA of Deus Ex has been working its way into the indie scene. Many upcoming releases wear the Deus Ex influence on their sleeve. How these titles will play out remains to be seen. These are small teams tackling long development timeframes, but something to keep an eye on. Warren has mentioned what matters to him wasn't sales or critical reception, but the conversations players have had around his games. So to have a game where players have come across incredibly creative ways to play the game, to find something new each playthrough, Discussing just how much the story predicted of our modern world must be seen as the highest praise to him. There's a reason the phrase, every time you mention Deus Ex, someone will reinstall it, exists. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you are reinstalling it while watching this video, or will do so afterwards. I've certainly done so over the years. It's always fascinating to come back to revisit Deus Ex every once in a while. From trying different play styles, finding something new, or seeing its story predict yet another thing happening in our world. I've started this video with saying, depending on what day of the week you ask me, Deus Ex is my favorite game. And working on this video, I think that's changed to every day of the week. It was a game made at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. It's a game that we'll never get again. And seeing how the industry has been going, the chances of a game coming out that tops Deus Ex is next to zero. But that's okay, I could just fire up Deus Ex again. If you made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed this video on Deus Ex. I know there are a dime a dozen on YouTube, and I hope there's something new about the game you came across in this video, just like every playthrough you do. I'd love to hear from you in the comments of what you found throughout the years while playing this amazing game. I spill my drink! Hey, Evgeny! Evgeny! Where is Evgeny? That's funny! Out of my face! Downstairs! The upstairs is for us! More, tell them, Mama. Three more dancing.